Welcome back to the Daily Bread Bible Study. We are looking at day 33 for Leviticus chapters 16 through 18. There is a lot of content that we will cover, and I'd like to get into depth in what is happening here. But uh, let's first go into Leviticus chapter 16. So here is talking about scapegoats, something that we often focus on as Christians about Jesus there being the final sacrifice, the Lamb of God, the scapegoat that takes away the sins of the world. And here is kind of an explanation of what's happening with a scapegoat. So there are two goats, one for the Lord and one as the scapegoat. The scapegoat will be presented alive and will be let go into the wilderness. And Aaron goes in alone to make atonement there um, with the goats. So in Leviticus 16, verse 21, Then Aaron shall lay both his hands on the head of the live goat and confess over it all the iniquities of the people of Israel and all the transgressions and all their sins, putting them on the head of the goat and sending it away into the wilderness by means of someone designated for the task. The goat shall bear on itself all the iniquities to a barren region, and the goat shall be set free in the wilderness. So this day of atonement, process of atonement, the day of atonement is called Yom Kippur. Um, in Leviticus 16.29 it says, This shall be a statute to you forever. In the seventh month, on the tenth day of the month, you shall deny yourself and shall do no work, neither the citizen nor the alien who resides among you. For on this day atonement shall be made for you, to cleanse you from all your sins, you shall be clean before the Lord. So that's the process of the uh, ritual uh, scapegoat. In Leviticus 17, uh, we go into it just a little bit. Uh, Leviticus 17 talks about uh, cut being cut off for not bringing sacrifices before the Lord at the tabernacle and offering them up to the Lord. In Leviticus 17, verse 7, so that they may no longer offer their sacrifice for goat demons, satyrs, false idols, to whom they would prostrate themselves. So there was a lot of interesting things happening back in their day, ones of which I am less familiar with. In Leviticus 17, verse 14, For the life of every creature, its blood is its life, Therefore I have said to the people of Israel, You shall not eat the blood of any creature, for the life of every creature is its blood. Whoever eats it shall be cut off. So, important to keep those proper boundaries. Now, in Leviticus 18, it's a little bit more dicey boundaries uh, because it gets into sexual relations. And this uh, is a chapter, this is something that matters greatly to God. The Bible deals a lot with sexual dysfunction, as we've already seen so far. We've seen about rape. Uh, we've seen, well, we have seen a little bit about incest as well, too. We will see about adultery, uh, bestiality, uh, discussions around temple prostitution. So there's all sorts of sexuality wrapped up with the people. And just like our day and time, there are a lot of questions around sexuality and what is permissible. Now, I should also note that this section is often used by people to talk about homosexual behavior, but this text is not primarily addressing homosexual behavior, but more so addressing hetero heterosexual behavior, and especially ones that are dysfunctional. As such, this text should not be used to argue about the modern-day hot-button political issues seeking to condemn or approve specific sexual orientations. The same chapter that prohibits certain sexual relationships also prohibits eating pork. Why is that included and why is that important? The goal of it all is this, to keep dysfunction away from God's people especially dysfunction seen to be unhelpful and practiced by other nations. 
Leviticus 18.3 says, You shall not do as they do in the land of Egypt, where you lived, and you shall not do as they do in the land of Canaan, to which I am bringing you. You shall not follow their statutes. This is about being something different. And so this includes Leviticus 18, verse 6, that says, None of you shall approach anyone near of kin to uncover nakedness. I am the Lord. And just a reminder, too, to uncover your nakedness uh, may also include other connotations. In Genesis 9, 22, it was Ham, the father of Canaan, who saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brothers outside. Um, the New Jerusalem Bible translates it um, in verse 7 of chapter 18 in Leviticus. You will not have intercourse with your father or your mother. She is your mother. You will not have intercourse with her. So this uncovering nakedness again seems to be a metaphor for having intercourse with certain people. The list of people who you shall not have intercourse with um, are mainly uh, you know, people that uh, you are related to. So you shall not have intercourse with your mother, your father, which is your mother's nakedness, your sister, your niece, your, the aunt of your dad, so your father's nakedness, the aunt of your, of your mom, which is your mother's nakedness, the father's sister-in-law, a daughter-in-law, a sister-in-law, the woman and daughter together, granddaughter, uh, which is your flesh, woman and her sister, which is literally Jacob with Rachel and Leah because of Laban. Um, so anyways, that kind of happened already. Uh, a woman during their menst menstrual uncleanliness, the seven days of purification, um, or your kinsman's wife, which would be adultery. Three other things practiced yet forbidden to Israelites in Exodus uh, or in 21. It's you shall not give any of your offspring to sacrifice them to Moloch, which name means king or ruler, archon in Greek. And so profane the name of your God. I am the Lord. That was from Leviticus chapter 18, verse 21. Um, just a reminder to of the name Moloch or king or ruler is very important for the Egyptian story, their freedom from the Israelites. In Exodus 1.8, it said a new king, which the word Moloch appears here, arose over Egypt who did not know Joseph. So the king would be Pharaoh and other translations. So it's this idea of someone who is the ruler. In Leviticus 18.22, it says, You shall not lie with a male as with a woman. It is an abomination. Now, this text is often used as a proof text for modern-day Christians to be anti-homosexual. It's short and to the point. But, in a lot of ways, I see it as part of a larger list, which includes dysfunctions of several forms of heterosexuality. And if we span chapters in this book of Leviticus... It includes dysfunctions around all aspects of life. Again, this is less about an individual point, a political point you're trying to make, and this is more about being able to keep dysfunction away from God's people, especially dysfunction seen to be unhelpful and practiced by other nations. So I will not separate Leviticus 11.22 from Leviticus 18.7, um, that is, you shall not lie with a male as with a woman. It is abomination. You've got to keep that in context with the pig. For even though it has divided hooves and is cleft-footed, it does not chew the cud. It is unclean for you. So if you like eating bacon and enjoy being able to have a pork, that is something that it is unclean. Focusing again on animals in Leviticus 18.21, and 23, you shall not have sexual relations with any animal and defile yourself with it, nor shall any woman give herself to an animal to have sexual relations with it. It is a perversion. So that a lot of practices with temple prostitution and other 
uh, worship of other deities tied into that statement there. Leviticus 18, 24 through 25, Do not defile yourself in any of these ways, for by all these practices the nations I am casting out before you have defiled themselves. Thus the land became defiled, and I punished it for its iniquity, and the land vomited out its inhabitants. So all of this is to keep them being able to inherit the land of Canaan. So that's kind of it. There is a lot there. I hope you stuck with me through it. I hope you see that we're trying to focus on the text and what the text says and not what the text uh, doesn't say. Um, but next time we will get into uh, more of the expanding of something that I care more about, uh, Jesus's call to love your neighbors as yourself.